Welcome to part 2 of Evolution Simulator, of creatures doing math. While I normally don't do two consecutive videos on the same topic, I felt like since the last video was so underwhelming because you don't get to see any com comprehensible math being done, I just needed to get part 2 up there just to show you what these creatures really have in store. And I know that last time I said recording unedited videos felt sloppy, but another bout of laziness is sweeping over me right now, so I just had to revert back to this. But don't worry, because I'll try to keep things a little higher quality this time, if that's even possible. So, let's just jump right into the simulation. The only difference between this run and the run in the last video is that I have banned loops of axons. And the reason why I'm doing that is because loops of axons are what cause, um, like, math loops, like infinite loops of like powers of negative one and all that, which cause twitching, and twitching is what allows creatures to have boring walking mechanisms that humans just cannot decipher whatsoever. So now that, th now that those loops are banned, we should get creatures with actually interesting walking patterns, and that's what I want. So just like always, I'll do a step-by-step -step generation, also so I can explain stuff and just talk to you. So this is how the program works. It searches for any loops in, of axons, and the instant it finds one, all nodes that are associated in that loop are demoted to constants, like this guy here. Because when it's demoted to a, a constant, that loop will be destroyed, obviously. So that means you, you see a lot of nodes now with constants, and like, I don't really care. They can just do whatever. The main thing is that there are no loops of axons now, right? And that also means that since I'm just removing accents, never adding them. Oh, these there's two time nodes here, how pretty. And they're the same, which means they're calculating correctly. Because I'm only removing accents, a lot of these creatures have fewer accents than you're used to seeing, right? This one only has three. Which isn't a problem, right? It also means it's easier for you humans to decipher. Oh, Demipixel just said he got an awesome idea, but I cannot respond- Ooh, only one accent. I cannot respond because I'm too busy recording stuff. I was gonna say something else. Um... Oh, well you can see that these creatures are moving even less than the last set because they can't even vibrate whatsoever. And yeah, that's pretty cool. Oh, okay, so I, w I was just going to start talking about some things that happened as a reaction to the last video I made, right? So one thing that happened is I was brutally ridiculed for adding, accidentally adding, 8 minutes of black silence to the end of yesterday's video. And that was a mistake because I had... There was some cut audio. I recorded some audio for the last video that I decided not to include, but I wanted to just, you know, keep it there just for safekeeping. So I placed it at the very end of the the Sony Vegas file, and I kind of forgot about it. So when I rendered the Sony Vegas video, Sony Vegas thought that was part of the video, even though it was like way eight minutes beyond the end of the video, so I just kept it in there and yeah. But I edited the video inside of YouTube, which is something I don't do very often. So now it's fixed, so everyone who wanted to burn me at the stake because of that, you guys, you know, I, I satisfied you, right? Like, you got what you wanted, so stop it with all the pitchforks. Um, so here's our batch of creatures. Remember, there's no ax no axon loops and no twitching, so I wonder what the best creature will be, considering that they actually have to use simple, meaningful axon usage that didn't make sense. You know what I mean, right? They have to use axons in a way that humans can actually understand. So let's sort them. And right, this, this animation is slow. And because I'm using OBS to record this instead of Fraps, because I have to use, use OBS if I'm doing an unedited live recording kind of thing, it's slow. Actually, Fraps might be slower. I don't know which one's slower. But it's still human watchable, so who cares? So now we can see some creatures moving to the top now. And our number one creature... Okay, by the way, I forgot to say this. Um, this evolution simulator has a seed, a random seed that determines how all the random numbers will be generated. So, if I choose the same seed to run the simulation twice, I'll get the same results both times. Which means that if I see results that I think are very interesting, I can sort of save them and then use the same seed in a video to show you guys. And this seed I've actually already seen, so... If I ever act surprised about seeing something, it's all fake because I already know what's going to happen with the seed. I'm not going to tell you yet because you have to be surprised. But just letting you know that I already know what's going to happen in this world. I am omniscient, right? How often can you say that you're omniscient of a universe? Anyway, the number one creature I really like. Okay, just look at it. So you see there's one accent pointing from a time, time node 
And because of that, the muscle it's connecting to extends over the course of time. And because of that, it can flop to the right. So this is already an early mechanism to get further to the right, but it clearly only works once. So after the first three or so seconds, it can't move anymore. But moving for just the first three seconds already makes you better than all these other creatures. Oh, that looks like a twitch. If you see these twitches like this, you might be scared that my code didn't work, but rest assured that my code always works. Because what's happening here is these twitches are over the course of several frames, right? So you know it's not a twitch happening because of math in, on each individual frame. It's probably because that time node is being used somehow. I don't know. Anyway, you don't need to worry about it. It's not a bug, and we'll see what happens. So the best creature went 33 centimeters using this genius mechanism. I'm just like, I'm so impressed, right? Like, I mean, I feel like, uh, like if I were to design something, I could not design something so beautiful. And then the worst creature, this is actually kind of interesting, went really far in the opposite direction. Like, did, did you see those 33 centimeters? To, okay, 0.3, I'll use the meter as my unit all the time. 0.33 meters to the right. That's the best creature. The worst creature went seven meters backward. That's like 21 times further backward. Um, and unfortunately, even though this looks like a very capable creature, it's gonna be killed because it just went in the wrong direction. So we're gonna kill 500 now. So there we go. This guy survived, of course. Flop. By the way, here's number two if you wanted to see it. There's actually no time node here. Oh, it's another flopper. See, floppers are good at the beginning. Okay, I'm gonna reproduce and go back. So you can see in this graph here how far that negative seven meters was because everything else is all just cramped up here. Here's the best creature. We've already watched it like three times. Meeting creature didn't move at all as expected. No accents, weird. And the worst creature you've already seen. Also, I will do a quick generation now. I'm not really sure why. Um, maybe just to see where our previous first place creature places this time. You can see it actually places second. So this was last generation's best creature, now placing second, and it was bested by this creature who made it actually only seven millimeters further. Again, it's a one motion creature, meaning it cannot sustain motion. It only acts at the very beginning. But you know, at the very beginning of the simulation, those creature, tre creatures are gonna dominate because no one else is doing anything. Yeah, so it's a flopper and we kill 500 and we reproduce. Now the median is 0 0.024 meters. That's very cool. I think I'll ASAP generations now. Okay, so sometimes I don't really know what to talk about, but if the best creature ever beats the last generation's best creature, I'll show it off. And also if it only, only if it's like really different from the last best creature. So here was our first beloved flopper using time to really push that muscle out. Flop. And then it was bested by this um, other flopper that doesn't look as nice, but is better. And then both of those 33 centimeter performances were blown out of the water by this best creature who got 51 centimeters and it's very twitchy again. But like, it's more unpredictable twitching. Like, I don't really know what's going on. Anyway, you might have think, thought like, oh, this creature's so good when you first saw that it beat everyone else, but then you see it and it's like, there's still a lot of improvements to be done, right? Anyway, yeah, let's keep going now. I kind of forgot everything interesting that happens in this seed, so I'll have to remember on the fly, but I think I can do it because I have an amazing memory. Also, look at that big breakthrough. Now there's a new best creature, it's species 5-5, which I've never heard of before. That means it's like a pentagon shape, which is also very floppy. So I cannot imagine this creature being the best in the long future, right? But it does very well here. And also remember, twitching that happens over the course of multiple frames like this one, not a bug. That's just how some creatures are, okay? Don't judge. They were born that way, okay? And they'll probably die in a few seconds too, so just give them appreciation while they're still alive. Oh, they got off the ground. That's weird. I thought when all the nodes hit the ground, it's game over. Maybe everything I've been saying was a lie, but whatever. It's all floating point rounding errors. Not my fault. So you can see in the species breakdown, S45, like a lot of the time, takes a kind of majority. Just like as everyone's like learning who everyone else is, S45 always tends to get about a third or half of the population. Just because 
it's, a, you know, a good middle ground between complexity and simplicity. Wow, it's way ahead now. So, the thing is, like I was saying, there's two types of movement. There's instant movement at the beginning based on how how your creature set up in the initial state to like flop down forward. And then there's also constant movement, which is a constant movement. It keeps going forward as time elapses. And no creatures so far have figured out constant movement, really. I guess you could call this, this spazzy one constant, but it's really not constant. So the instant one creature can find a constant way of moving, even if it's really slow, it's still going to move like two or three meters, right, at least. So that will be the huge breakthrough, like the Cambrian explosion of this evolution simulator, if I can remember my biology. Or is that even considered biology or history? I mean, it really is history, just further back in time. So we'll keep going and wait for that breakthrough to happen. So we can see S45 got way more than the majority, but the tables have turned and S33 is in the lead, and I don't really know why. But the median is often a good indicator of where everyone is. Okay, so the thing that's taking over the population now, you know, the latest craze these days, is a triangle, and it's using another flopping mechanism. Um, just by setting all the muscles... Okay, so, so when, it, when I create a new creature, I want to make sure that it can't use an initial spasm to go far. I guess this creature would prove otherwise, but just listen to what I've got to say. So, what I do is I spend about 100 frames with each creature, maybe it's 200 frames, but what it does is it exists in a gravityless state, kind of like those sensory deprivation chambers, right? You can't feel anything. And I just let the creature settle out so it can figure out what its natural state of equilibrium is. So that way, when it's placed on the um, actual ground to test itself, the testing ground, then there won't be any spasms just by the way it was positioned, right? The muscles will already be in equilibrium. Now, when I'm doing this, test for equilibrium, I don't actually use the axons at all. So the fact that this creature input 1.5 length into some of its muscles means that those muscles get to spaz at the very beginning, which I guess isn't the best, but it works, right? So this creature is taking over because 0.377 is a good performance this early in the game. And now you're probably getting impatient because I'm talking for too long, so let's keep going. And also there hasn't been a breakthrough for 20 or so generations, which is kind of sad. But, the triangle's reign is starting to end. You can see S4, 6 taking up in the end, right there. Yeah, yeah, no, no breakthrough. Okay, I don't know if I really care about the majority of creatures, like the 99%, like so to speak, which is what you see in this thing, in this graph down here, or just the best creature, which is what you see up here. Because the best creature is what I would display to someone saying like, hey, what, what, what is the best thing that this evolution simulator can produce? I would show them this guy, right? Well, not now, but what I'm saying is, like, where do we look for the breakthroughs? Is it down here or up here? But I guess I'll look at both. So as soon as a new breakthrough, there was a small improvement. Someone hit a meter, or not quite, 0 0.997. Oh, I remember this one. I was going to talk about this. Um, so, what, what is there to talk about? So it seems to settle, right? So it seems to be settled, and then it picks up again. I'm not really sure why that happens, but notice the node on the very top, the bright red one, says PY, right? That means it's measuring the position of the Y coordinate. I didn't do just Y for some reason, because like there's also X coordinate, and I don't want to do just X because that looks like times. So it's PX, PY for X coordinate and Y coordinate. Um, so if it's taking, I'm not sure how this is exactly working. If it's taking the Y coordinate as an input, if the Y coordinate is not moving, then the information from the Y coordinate is also not moving, so the muscles don't change length. But say there's a very tiny shake in the Y coordinate that you can't even see with your eyes because it's so small. That will kind of compound because it's, that's fed back into the axon, and I don't know where the axon's going, but wherever it's going, it's, it's a positive feedback loop, and it just... So it looks like it's settled, but then the loop increases and increases, and then it jumps. So that's how I think that works. Um, again, this is only after 40 generations, and we still have not gotten to the constant movement breakthrough that I'm talking about. I'm really hyping that up. Oh, there it is. Actually, I'm not really sure. That's that's only 1.7. Oh, it's the same, same creature, but with a slight difference. Oh, gets in a few more leaps, so it can improve its performance from 1 meter to 2 meters. Pretty cool, right? That is cool. Um, also, 
Oh, this is species S46 taking over. You can see this was the S S33 strategy, pretty bad, followed by this better strategy, which is to put a node that records Y coordinates, because as that node bounces up and down, you get some stimulus that changes, and that thing that changes back and forth will give you kind of the motor to keep the creature up and alive. So we'll keep going, and I lied to you, the constant movement breakthrough hadn't happened yet. So now it's about like neck and neck between S46 and S33. Well, not quite. S46 is winning pretty clearly now. Okay, we have a new best creature. This one is... It's kind of... The, it's S45. It looks pretty similar. But same strategy, I think. Take the coordinate of the Y thing and use it. I, I wish I could zoom in further. I probably can. Oh, here's, a, here's an interesting thing. If you look closely, you can see that the information from the PY node, well you can't see it when it's spazzing, is being fed into the lower right node, which is a multiplier. And the multiplier is... It's multiplying the Y coordinate by the time that has elapsed. Which means that if you look at the, what's on the black node, the time recorder... Oh no, if you look at the black node, the multiplying node, it is essentially the Y coordinate scaled with how much time has elapsed. And I don't know why that would be useful. Again, this is just randomly produced, so maybe it's not useful at all but it's enough spasms to get first place. Um, I mean, the goal is... Oh, oh, there's, there's the breakthrough. That's definitely the breakthrough. <laughs> I was like, oh, that's the breakthrough, but I did not know what was coming. So here's the new creature. It's a triangle again, which means triangles have come back. Right? Oh, oh, this is the one where I was like, definitely like, this has settled, and then it reawakens because of the, you know, positive feedback loop thing. And this is pretty cool, right? You can you can more clearly see what's going on. So, the Y coordinate is being multiplied by time into the lower right node. Um, I don't think the, the multiplication by time really matters that much, except that it's spending the first few seconds doing nothing, because since time is so low, the product will be really low, and the muscles won't do any movement. But, when that multiplication factor is between 0 0.5 and 1, Oh, actually, I was wrong about this. The reason it's not moving is because uh, the multiplication factor was less than 0 0.5, so when it's being fed into the two muscles you see there, it was being capped, so no movement was happening. But as soon as that number enters the range between 0 0.5 and 1.5, the muscles will actually start to record the actual um, number as their length, and you'll start to see it contracting ex and expanding. So the trick here... Well, what was the trick that made it so much better than this guy? Um... Okay, well, one, one clear problem of this creature is that the PY node ends up on the bottom, which means that its bobbing up and down will no longer exist, and you need that bobbing to get it moving. Um, so if you look closely, you can see that the muscles get longer when when the node up high gets higher. Like, you see how when the, the creature's high in the air, the muscles get longer? That's what you'd expect. Anyway, let's keep going. Obviously, a lot of improvements can be made because since this creature is so high friction, every time it lands, it just like abruptly stops, and it's losing precious meters when it's stopping immediately. So hopefully it can learn to improve that. So you can see, like I said, oh, there's a new best creature, let's look at it. It's also a triangle, I, I bet. Yeah, same, same, same gist, right? Just, just a uh, tweak. I was looking for the word, it's tweak. I don't really know what it is. Ugh, oh, that was gross. But whatever, it was better than last time. What was I saying? Oh, right. Um, so, the breakthrough happened here, which means there was one creature, one triangle, that could get to 4 meters. And every generation, its population of descendants should double. So we get like... 1, 2, 4, 8, 16, 32, 128... Wait, 64. Oh, I, I lost count. But anyway, wait, that doesn't quite work because of like, deaths and... Like, random deaths and all that. Like, I talked about that earlier. Um, but you can see how um, it, it just didn't have enough time to really show up in the population for the first few generations. And then you can see it happening now. Now it's taking over. Yeah. So the triangle um, definitely knows how to move forward now, so it's taking over. I'm just repeating myself a lot. <sighs> what new stuff is there to say? Oh, there's one thing I have on the list of things to mention. 
Um, I was also viciously mocked for saying that I was simplifying things in the last video. And then I followed that by introducing this really complex new axon thing with like 11 different types of nodes. And I have a defense for why I still think that makes sense what I said. So when I was talking about simplifying things, I was more talking about simplifying my code so that I didn't have as many arbitrary rules um, and the variables that I just decided might help the creature out. See, one thing as an evolution simulator creator is you want to give your creatures as little um, little stuff to work with as possible at the very beginning. You don't want to hand them anything for free. You want the creature to figure out all the traits and mechanisms it needs on its own, right? So the, the hope is that at the very beginning the creatures are as dumb and stupid as possible. So, I felt like in the first few videos, the fact that I was already giving them an internal clock and already giving them the idea that muscles should change in length felt like I was kind of cheating, right? I was already giving them this important piece of information that they should have to figure out for themselves. Because if they could figure that out, that out for themselves, it would be more of a testament to how good evolution is. So my goal in this, in introducing the neuron, is to now say, um, everything, all the mechanisms that the creature uses now are you know purely by natural selection and I did not decide to make this muscle get longer and shorter and longer and shorter based on this schedule that I had, uh, I had given them. Now I can fully say that the creatures are their own work. Does that make sense? So that's kind of one reason why I think it's simplified in that they have less to work with from the beginning. And then also I made my code shorter because I no longer have to keep variables for extend length, contract length. Um, extend time and contract time. I do have to increase some parts like for like the accents, but it was like so much less to add for the accents than it got to remove for the muscles. So I think it's a general plus. And also, um, I have not been um, broadcasting the news to you guys. There have been a ton of general improvements to the triangle. So the triangle now can go seven meters. Um, yeah, it's definitely that time multiplier that makes it not move at the beginning. And I feel like that's a waste that's a real waste because if you just replace that time node with a node that always outputs like 10, then it should be able to run for the whole 15 seconds, right? Um, I don't know what the improvement was because it still looks pretty bad to me. But hey, it's only 104 generations in. I mean, every time this simulation fails and it produces a creature I find really boring, I should not be so hard on myself because on Earth it must have taken Okay, well, it took billions of years for creatures to even get out of the water, right? And each generation for a single-celled organism is like a few hours? I have no idea. But definitely less than a year, which means that not only billions, but trillions of generations happened for them. But again, they also had to deal with like chemical reactions and natural disasters and the fact that um, they couldn't even reproduce from the very beginning, whereas these already know how to reproduce somehow. But hey, like I still think that any evolution that happens at all in the simulator is pretty cool because it happens at all. I didn't even think that. Like when I first made this, I didn't think it would work, but it kind of does work. Um, same creature looks a little smaller this time. Maybe smallness is good. Yeah, it's definitely smaller, and the the muscles are more rigid. That's pretty clear. Um, yeah. Okay, let's keep going. I think something else happened with the seed, I'm not really sure. Maybe this was the end. I did have the seed running for like 2,000 generations as I ate dinner, and nothing interesting happened at, after a certain point, and I just don't know if I've reached that point yet. But I do- I have recorded how far they got, let me check. Like in the very end. They got up to 7.4 meters, which isn't very far. Oh shoot, this is a spoiler, don't look. You know, if you look, it's fine. It's your own fault. You, I mean, like, it takes effort to read something so small. And you're going to see it anyway in, like, five minutes. So no sympathy there. Actually, I think this is where things settle down and stop changing. Because I remember that the last era was a really long triangle era. And that's what we're seeing right now. Um, but I guess I could ALAP a little longer. There's another seat I'm going to show you that's even more interesting. The reason why I showed you this seat at all was because I really like the best creature of the first generation. The one that flops because there's a neuron that takes time into the muscle so the muscle gets longer. That one I just thought was just so smart that I had to show it even though the future of this seed 
is not as interesting as the other one. And besides, like who want, who doesn't want to see two seeds versus one, right? Two more seeds, the better. Uh, yeah. Mm. Um. So, our population is homogenizing, which is bad for diversity. Um, yeah, I can I can definitely imagine them not doing any ma major breakthroughs and still being able to improve that six meter median up to seven meters. Like that tends to be what happens near the end. They just tweak stuff and tweak and tweak until they get uh, like a few more meters onto there, but nothing earth shattering. Is that even a, an adjective? Earth shattering. Oh, groundbreaking. That's better. So this line is the 80 percentile mark. Which means that the 90 percentile mark is still at zero, and oh wow, over 100 creatures are not, are not moving at all. Let's take a look at the worst creature. Oh, it just flipped horizontally. That's one thing about having creature shapes defined only by nodes and muscles, is that you can flip it horizontally, and it'll act exactly the same way. And I think that's a good thing, but it also means you get stuff like this. Yeah, if only they could replace that time node with a constant of 10, I think they could do so much better. But I don't know if that's ever going to happen. I mean, it should happen because there's always a small chance of any mutation happening. But maybe... Okay, well the problem is... If they... If they change their time node into... A constant node... The constant would be zero because right now the time value is zero, so it would have to do that mutation, and then also another mutation to change the constant to about 10. So if it can't do both at the same time, if it only does one mutation, it'll die, because with a constant of zero, no muscle change will happen. So it's got to do rapid fire two mutations, which is maybe why it's not happening yet, and it would take many more generations to finally get lucky and have those two generations just by chance happen back to back. So the first, uh, just to reiterate, the first mutation is change the type of node from a time node to a constant node, and the second mutation is change the value of that node from 0 to 10-ish. So I think just about now, I'll go over to the second seed to show you the more interesting stuff. Now one cool thing I think that accents have added to the evolution simulator, okay, before I go to the second seed, is that there are more breakthroughs, right? So evolution I think realistic evolution doesn't happen linearly, right? There's periods of rapid development and like new features being added and then like it just falls into a rut and then there's no improvement for a long time and then suddenly a new creature will have a good mutation and then everyone's going to change again for a few thousand generations and then it settles down again. So you get these steps, right? Steps of improvement. And my simulator wasn't really showing that. I was always seeing linear lines which I said I was cool was cool a few videos ago, but now I think it's it's more realistic and more cool if you get these breakthroughs like this. Like you you know something big happened right around generation 70, right? Because this this line is just so steep that improvement and that improvement was this creature. Yeah. So. So yeah, yeah. I I like these big jumps. It also more clearly defines eras, and I really like having different eras. Okay, let's go to the next seed now. But before we make the jump there, I just want to prove that there actually is no more improvement. So here's it after 555 generations going through history. Watch that that like jiggle as they're improving themselves. And then last time I felt bad that I only recorded two seconds of the best creature's performance. So here's the full 15 seconds to indulge your eyes in because this is what you came to this video for. So why could I deprive you of that? I shouldn't. Yeah, so he, here's what you've been looking for, yeah. Yeah, 9 meters, pretty good. The median was 6 meters, not as good, but still better than me, right? I tried to run as far as po possible in 15 seconds, and I only got like an inch, because I'm just so incapable. Okay, let's go now.